On this episode of Motivate's Do It Yourself Garage, we are going to show you the inside operation of an electronic throttle. Here is an electronic throttle body. Now this one happens to come from an Infiniti G37, but the exact same one is used on a Nissan 370Z, or for my American friends, a 370Z. This part here connects to a long black tube that goes to our air filter box, and the back here bolts right onto our air intake plenum. In the middle, we have a butterfly valve, which is also known as a throttle plate. Depending upon its position, it determines how much air goes into the engine, which determines how much power the engine makes. Now, it is driven by a small electric motor, which is located right inside here. More on that in a minute. Here, we have coolant passages. The throttle body is actually heated by engine coolant to prevent throttle body icing. Believe it or not, it's possible to have ice buildup inside the throttle body at temperatures as high as 21 Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So to prevent that, hot engine coolant is routed through here and that warms up the entire throttle body, preventing any ice from forming. Now you're probably thinking what I was thinking. Hold on a minute. So the whole throttle body is warmed up but we've got air flowing through here. Won't that warm up the air going into the engine? Well, I did some data logging on my G37 using the mass airflow sensor and a little bit of math. At 3,500 RPM under wide open throttle conditions, the airspeed through this throttle body is 10 meters per second. That is 34 feet per second. With air traveling at that speed, it does not have much time to absorb much heat from the throttle body. So I really can't see a heated throttle body causing any performance loss from the engine. Now, moving over here, we have the electrical connector that runs to the ECU. Two pins are used to control the electric motor, which is right in here, and the other four pins are used by the ECU to read the throttle position, which is right here. The sensor's right in behind here. Okay. On the top, you can see I've already removed the four screws, so let's pop up this cover and have a look. Here, we can see the general operation of the throttle body. This is the gear that's on this small electric motor, and this gear has to turn about four and a quarter times from fully closed to fully open. That's fully closed and that's fully open. Okay, now let's just remove this gear so we can see inside a little bit better. This is the wide open throttle stop. So under full throttle, that's as far as the throttle can open. And we can see it's not adjustable because there's no screw there. Now on the other side, right over here, we have a set screw. This set screw protrudes right here. And that determines the throttle stop position because this flat piece of plastic will touch right here. And that's the closed throttle position. Let me show you from a different angle. So right here we can see how they touch and that's the throttle closed position. Now you may be wondering, we've got a set screw here, but it doesn't seem to touch anything. I, what does that set screw do? Well, when we clean the throttle body, one of the things we need to do is the throttle valve closed position learning. And what the EC will do, the EC will drive this motor in the opposite direction and it will close that gap. Watch, it will do this, just go like that. And the gap gets closed. Now, it doesn't look like it's doing much, but let me show you something. Right here, we can see a tiny bit of white space between the throttle plate and our throttle body. So even though the throttle is fully closed, it's still open a tiny bit. When we do the throttle valve closed position learning, this happens. So we can see the gap right there, and then it goes away. The throttle is actually driven completely closed, no air can pass. When it's in this position, the EC will then read the throttle position and it will record that. And that's when it knows the absolute closed position. Now what also happens is this closed position becomes the absolute throttle body position of 0% if you're using an OBD scanner. Now, when the learning is done, it resumes back to this resting closed throttle position. The screw here sets the absolute closed throttle position, and this screw sets the resting closed throttle position. Here we can see a spring. 
the throttle plate is actually closed by the spring. The motor opens it and it will hold it open. The spring is what closes it. So if there's a electronic malfunction and the motor loses power, the throttle will just simply close from the force of the spring. It's a nice fail safe system. Let's leave this here and let's look at the cover. Um, not much interesting on this side here. We'll flip it over. Here we can see we've got two little electrical connectors and they actually come right over here to provide control power to our small DC motor. Now here we have the throttle shaft. We get a flat spot and another flat spot. This throttle shaft goes right inside here. And as the throttle position changes, so does this. And you probably have guessed already, this is the actual throttle position sensor. In behind here are two variable resistors and the resistance will change depending upon the throttle position. The last thing I wanna point out is this nice rubber seal that goes all the way around. That ensures any water and dirt do not get inside our throttle body. All right, let's wrap up this episode. As you can see, an electronic throttle body really isn't very complicated. It has a position sensor, a few gears, and a small electric motor. However, before doing any repairs or adjustments, you should always follow the factory shop manual. They may be simple, but they often have special procedures that need to be followed. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.